Hi everybody, and very welcome to Mentor in yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the video, guys, we're going to be talking about aircraft with detachable cabins. Cabins that, in the case of a catastrophic malfunction, could be detached from the aircraft and then nicely fall down to the, to the ground using parachutes. Is this a good idea? Does it solve many problems? And are there already aircraft fitted with this system existing today? Stay tuned. This video is brought to you in cooperation with Cambly. Now, Cambly is an English tutor website, an app that will help you by getting you into contact with a private tutor of your choice and uh, you can set up your own kind of English course, you know, depending on if you need better vocabulary, better conversational skills, everything. So, link here below will give you 15 minutes for free to check them out and also 10% off on any subscription that you choose to use. So, check it out. Right guys, so, um, detachable aircraft cabins. So, just to explain it to you, um, this has been long, the idea has been long for a, a long time, but it really came to the surface a few years back when a inventor called uh, Vladimir Tatarenko um, launched a YouTube video which showed a concept design of an aircraft, a high-winged aircraft that could release the cabin Whenever the pilots thought that they had an uncontrollable failure on board, they could just release the cabin. Uh, the cabin would fall out, it would shoot out parachutes, and then it would, would sink down onto the ground onto two inflatable pontoons that could either you know, soften the blow when it landed or have it floating on water. So it seems on the onset to be solving uh, a, a major issue. Right? That's when, when you look at the YouTube video, if you don't know much about the aviation business, it actually looks like this is a great idea. Why isn't every aircraft built like this? Well, I'm going to start to tackle this from a, from a professional point of view. All right? So, whenever you look at a problem like this, um, how you look at it is going to be depending on how much you know about that system. So, for example, if you ask someone who doesn't know anything about driving, how could we stop people from dying in car accidents? Well then, the first thing that they might think about is, well, why don't we just bubble wrap the, the cars? Why don't we put these big plastic um, protections around them so that if they bump into each other, they don't, they don't get injured? Uh, sounds like a good solution, doesn't it? This solution that uh, Tatarenko is coming with is similar to that kind of problem solving. But if you ask someone who's, a, who's an expert on traffic accidents, they will tell you that, well, the way to reduce death in traffic is by a smart and proper road design, it's by making sure everyone is using seat belts, and it's by making sure that there are proper speed limits in force. And the same thing goes for the aviation business, all right? So, the I call this first, the first reason why I don't think that this is a fantastic idea, the misconception of the problem. So, aircraft, even though you might think that they fall out of the sky when something happens today, they don't actually. Um, the way that we design aircraft today is by redundancy. That means that there are a lot of systems that uses and does the same thing. So, if one system fails, the other system will pick it up and the aircraft will continue to fly safely. Um, the, system, the, the way that we maintain an extremely high safety rate, which we do have in this industry, is by the aircraft manufacturers building safer and safer aircraft, built on the experience that they've gotten over decades. It's by the maintenance of the airlines, making sure that all of the, the, um, the aircraft is always maintained to a very high standard. And it's by training the crews, so the crews knows how to react to a failure and safely handle it so that they can get the aircraft not detaching the cabin and crashing but flying it down landing it safely on an airport where there's plenty of uh, firefighting equipment medical equipment things like that that's how we deal with a problem like this 
All right. So that's the first thing. That's the misconception of the problem. The aircraft will not fall down out of the sky. It is not a big problem. All right. The second thing uh, is what I call timing of incidents. So on the few uh, incidents that we do have in this industry, they tend to happen close to the ground, as in during the takeoff phase or during the landing phase. All right. Uh, that is because during takeoff and landing phase, the aircraft is flying relatively slow and it's close to the ground, which means that if something happens, the pilots have less time to react to it. But this also means that if something would happen close to the ground um, and we had this system installed, we couldn't detach the cabin because it would be so close to the ground that the cabin wouldn't have time to develop the parachutes and it would just fall down. All right? So that makes sense. So th this means basically that during the takeoff and landing phase, this, no matter what the YouTube video is saying, this system just wouldn't work. Instead, what we as pilots do is we concentrate on training during the, the, like the takeoff and landing phase is properly trained. If something happens, like an engine failure or so, we are trained to deal with it and get the aircraft safely flying so that we can just return to the airport and land safely. That, that's how we maintain such a, a high safety rate as it is. Um, so what about in the cruise then? What about if we would have a, a, a major malfunction during the cruise? Well, in the cruise, then yes, then you're high enough for, for this system to be actually effective. But the thing then is the, the flight crew has to A, understand that they have a, a malfunction that is so serious that the safest course of action would be to release the cabin. All right, that's number one. Number two is that they have to have actually time to do that. Okay, and if the pilots have time to do that, it means that it's not a catastrophic failure of the aircraft structure. Well, that means that if they have time to take that decision, they probably have time to actually fly the aircraft and land it safely instead. Okay, so if you look at different examples, um, for example, the um, Air France 447 disaster that happened over the Atlantic, where uh, the flight crew came into an icing condition and lost some of their instrumentation, and then uh, they didn't uh, interpret the instrumentation that they had correctly, and they stalled the aircraft. Now, what happened then is that the aircraft basically fell out of the sky. That's what happened. But the problem was that the, the pilots didn't understand that this is what was happening, because their instruments were telling them different things. So, in a case like that, they wouldn't have detached the cabin because they were still trying to figure out what was going on. And when they understood how bad it was, they were so low down that they couldn't have detached the cabin anyway. Similarly, uh, the Malaysian aircraft that was shot down over Ukraine, um, in that case, the, the missile that shot them down basically killed off the flight crew, the first thing that happened. So there would be no one left to, to detach the cabin and, and it still would have had the same outcome. So even though these are extremely rare events, and I should say that as well, the, 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 you know, the uh, very serious incidents that happens while the aircraft is in cruise are extremely rare. Okay. The point three is the actual design process. All right. So if we would dis if we would just disregard the first two reasons why this is not a great idea and just look at the design uh, problem. In order for this to be added, let's, let's say that you want to fit all existing aircraft or you want to rebuild the fleet in a, a similar way that it is now, but with this system. First of all, um, just redesigning an aircraft costs hundreds of millions of dollars. All right? uh, if you then have to add parachutes to a system of an aircraft the size of a 747 or an Airbus 380, well then you have to realize that you need about a square meter of, uh, of a parachute for each half kilo. So we're talking enormous parachutes here. If it's even physically possible to do, uh, it would add an enormous amount of weight to the aircraft, which would mean an enormous amount of extra fuel, which would mean even more expenses for you as a passenger or for the airline. Okay. And then you have, whenever you have a new system in force, that needs to be tested out. And in this case, it would actually, it looks like it would weaken the existing aircraft structure because the, the cabin actually forms part of the structure and, and strengthens it. And if that's detached, you need something else to strengthen the, the wings, spar valves, everything, all, all that keeps the aircraft together. And that will also add weight. 
And on top of that, you have to maintain this system. Otherwise, you might uh, suffer things like uh, unintentional detachment of the cabin, which will be bad, uh, or partial detachment of the cabin, which could also cause incidents. So anytime you make a huge um, remake of an existing design, there will be additional problems, problems that you didn't think about in the beginning. Now, and all of this will cost money. So these are the three reasons why I don't personally think that this is a good idea, right? It looks good on the onset. It looks like a quick fix to a problem that you perceive is there. But in reality, the problem is not really there uh, and it doesn't fix the problem that it, you know, goes out to fix. Now, having said that, there are actually aircraft out there who are equipped with parachutes, but these are smaller aircraft. So, notably, for example, the uh, Cirrus company is building, uh, building small single-engine propeller aircraft. They have equipped their aircraft with a uh, system called CASP, Cirrus uh, Aircraft Parachute System. And what that is, is basically a single, I think it's a single parachute actually, that shoots out in case the pilot of the single-engine aircraft feels that he's spinning out of control, or that he suffers some kind of malfunction that he can't handle, or she. Um, this system is built to get the aircraft out of a spin and get it safely with the crew down on the ground. And uh, it's actually been used, it's been deployed 84, 85 times already, and saved approximately 140 lives. So this is a very, very good system. But it's a small aircraft, it requires a smaller parachute, and it is an aircraft that is more prone to failure. As in propeller aircraft, piston aircraft are much more prone for engine failures than two engine um, jet aircraft are. So it's two completely different things. Now, to finish off, I should say that there is actually a patent from Airbus on a detachable cabin. But this is not a cabin that is designed to be detached in mid-air. No, this is a, a patent that Airbus launched uh, a few years back where, um, where they want to, um, to have cabins that you could pre-board inside of the airport and then a, an aircraft would come in and the crane would just lift out the uh, cabin with the passengers on board, the inbound passengers, and then just lift in the outbound passengers and the aircraft could taxi out and take off again. So basically that would be to minimize the turnaround time, that means maximize the profit for the airlines, and that is of course something that the airlines might be more interested in. But once again it would come with the same kind of costs for redesigning the aircraft, and also in this case they would have to redesign a large amount of the airport in the world in order to facilitate a system like that. So it's likely just a uh, kind of a ploy, something as a concept. But that's it, guys. That's what I had about this. Uh, don't get me wrong. I love innovation within the safety field. I love that people are thinking outside of the box. But uh, in this case, I feel that this system is based on a perceived fear of the public and it doesn't actually contribute to the overall safety of the business. And that's what I wanted to get through with this. Guys, I want to finish off by saying a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video and actually the, uh, the people who asked me about this system to start with, Cambly. Now, Cambly, if you haven't checked it out, I sincerely hope that you go down and click and get your 15 minutes of free uh, reusage because they will set you up with a tutor of your choice, all right? And you will have a conversation with that tutor and he or she will then get, give you a lesson plan based on, you know, if you want to improve your communication skills, your vocabulary, or whatever it might be, or maybe you want to prepare yourself for an airline interview, or if you just want to improve your English skills, Cambly is a unique, both app and website will help you do that. Check it out, 15 minutes for free, doesn't cost you anything to try it, and if you like it, there's another code down here that will give you 10% off whatever subscription that you choose to use. That's it, guys. I hope that you have checked out mentorpilot.com by now. Uh, I am featuring uh, flight schools in there that I think are good. I'm also uh, writing blog posts and things like that that I think that you will find interesting. Check out mentorpilot.com and have an absolutely fantastic day. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.